Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Boardsy, and in this video we're going to be doing a comparison of the Razer Viper Mini and the Razer Viper Standard. Um, the first thing you're going to notice right off the bat is that these mice are different sizes and shapes. Er, well, you can't really notice that they're a different shape, but you gotta believe me, they're a different shape. Okay, fuck, gotta get the lighting right. Um, and I'll get into the size, shape, and weight later, but for now, we're just gonna talk about the actual aspects of the mouse, and first we're gonna talk about build quality. So the build quality on both of these mice are, is spectacular. Um, I haven't had a single issue with either. Um, that wasn't side flex you heard, that was the side buttons on the right side. Um, seriously, I've had no issues. I've been super hard on both of these mice in the times that I've used them and I haven't had a single issue. So regardless of which one you get, you're gonna get a very strong mouse. Um, going into the coating, the Viper Mini has a all around like PBT like feeling. It's like most grippy on the clicks, but even on the sides, it's still a grippy like coating instead of like a standard mat that you feel on something like the Model O or a Zowie mouse. Um, but the Viper Mini doesn't have the same sort of grippy feel on the main clicks and it has a rubberized side coating but overall the coating on both of these mice is really good but definitely got to give the edge to the viper mini like the viper mini it sticks to my hand really well but i do tend to sweat on it a lot i know i said in the other reviews that i didn't sweat on it but since i started playing a bit more warzone i have began to sweat on my mouse unfortunately um, now going into the main mouse one and two clicks, both of them use the opto mechanical switch, but the Viper Mini's clicks are a bit crispier. I'm not sure what changed. Um, you can hear the sort of hollow sound and just overall not very firm, but on the Viper standard edition, it's, um, a solid click. It's super light. Um, and the Viper Mini is virtually the same actuation feel. Um, overall, both of these mice have solid clicks because they do use the same switch, so there's not much room to be different. Overall, rate both of the clicks a solid 8 out of 10. Um, they could be a bit better, but they get the job done. And apparently they have less debounce time than any other mouse, so that's pretty epic. Um, next, we're going to talk about the scroll wheel. The standard Viper has a pretty hard to actuate scroll wheel, but it has a nice feel and it is super loud. Um, a lot of people complain about the actuation force needed to like actually scroll, so they toned it down on the Viper Mini, and in doing that, they also made it a lot quieter. So if you want a more quiet, like easy scroll feel, the Viper Mini is going to satisfy you more. Um, you can hear pretty loud, not very loud. Um, both of them have an insanely easy click, and it's pretty solid. Um, now the side buttons. The Viper, as you know, has side buttons on both sides and they don't protrude out of the mouse whatsoever because of the side grip. Um, I was very critical of this, not many other mouse review YouTubers were, just saying. And it basically made the side buttons unusable for a game like Fortnite where it's side button intensive. Obviously, if side buttons don't matter to you, um, this doesn't mean much, but for a lot of people, myself included, side buttons do matter, and the Viper Mini does not have that um, rubberized grip on the sides or the side buttons on the right, so the side buttons are very easy to hit, and I like this because they're really good side buttons. They're a bit hard to press down, but they make up for that with super crispy, super firm, solid clicks. Um, the Viper is a bit more hollow and not as like good overall, along with the fact that you can't really hit them. So side buttons are gonna definitely have to give that to the Viper Mini. Um, now the cord. Unfortunately, the Viper Mini has a worse cord than the um, Viper Standard Edition. I'm not sure why this is. They advertise that they're using the same cable, but as you can see, the Vipers is a lot more flexible and yeah you can see there that the Viper 
standard edition has a better cord obviously in a bungee you're not going to really be able to notice the difference but i would recommend paracording the viper mini if you're going to really use it as a main mouse well you don't really need to do that on the viper but obviously it could help regardless um onto the bottom of the mouse the mouse feet on the Viper Mini are 100% PTFE, while the Viper does not have that. They're just Teflon feet, which I don't understand why they didn't give it PTFE feet. But I'll show a little glide test. Um, while the Viper... So overall, both of them have nice, like, good feeling glides, because they do use the Zowie, like, large feet, but it's definitely um, a good bit better on the Viper Mini. It feels a lot more smooth, because they, of course, use PTFE. Um, so now we're going to talk about the sensor. This is one of the major differences um, in favor of the Viper. The Viper uses... The uh, Razer, it's like a 3390, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's what it's called. And it has some cooler capabilities and goes up to a higher DPI. One of the things is it like auto calibrates to your mouse pad. And um, I guess that's pretty cool if you care about the exact liftoff distance. I personally don't. So it doesn't really affect me that the Viper Mini doesn't have this. But there's also some other things that the sensor can do like go up to 16,000 DPI while the Viper Mini is limited to 8,500. But while playing with both of these mice, I haven't experienced any like tracking issues or spin outs, obviously. And I'm going to be making a video about how to reduce the liftoff distance of the Viper Mini. I know a lot of people complained about that, and I found the fix because I'm God. It's not the Razor Firefly method. Fuck you, fuck you. Um, so yeah, that's it for the actual aspects of the mouse. Now we're going to be talking about the shape and the size and the weight. Um, as you can see, the Viper Standard is a good bit taller than the Viper Mini. Like, a very good bit taller. Um, yeah. And it's also a bit more wide, but it is not... Uh, and when I said taller, I mean, like, le lengthwise. But the Viper Mini actually is... It has a higher hump... Um, making it a lot better for claw grips while the standard viper is good for fingertip or palm grip um, not really the best for claw grip I've started playing a bit more like towards claw myself and I've noticed that the viper mini is a lot easier to claw on even though um it's a bit too small for me but it's whatever but yeah nobody cares about that so this mouse is going to be directed towards people with small to medium hands who play sort of relaxed claw, claw, um, even palm grip if you like have small enough hands and maybe fingertip, it's possible, but it's just with a lot of mice with humps, it's easier just to do a sort of relaxed claw than fingertip, um, which is what I've been doing personally. So overall, if you have big hands, this mouse isn't going to be for you. Um, while the Viper is made for people with medium to large hands who play either fingertip I guess you could claw it or palm grip if you have big enough hands. So, but the thing is, I'm not really going to be um, recommending the Viper to anyone. I'm pretty sure they did lower the price from 80 to 70 but I still don't think you can really justify paying $70 for a mouse that doesn't have usable side buttons, has um, fucking Teflon glides, and not the most comfortable shape but that's my opinion obviously some people might love this shape but for me it's just not gonna like i wouldn't buy this mouse if i knew how it like performed well the viper mini is 40 dollars, and you get basically every great feature you can imagine aside from the cord but you don't even need to replace the cord i'm just a bit critical on cords um ptfe feet Great clicks, great, great side buttons, great scroll wheel, and a nice bit of RGB. There is a bit more RGB on the Viper Mini than the Viper. Uh, and the last thing I haven't touched on is weight. 
This mouse weighs in at 60 grams while the Viper weighs in at 70. And it is a bit noticeable of a difference, but personally I do prefer a tad bit um, like heavier weight. Like I prefer around 70 to 80 grams, I'm pretty sure is like my sweet range. While some people do like the ultra lightweight feel, it's obviously that's personal preference. I just want to be the least shaky I can be while aiming. So again, this is just going to be like a final little size comparison. And I'm going to say, if you have small hands or you're on a budget, fuck me, did that really just happen? God, I hate everything. Um, yeah, so if you're on a low budget, you have small hands, maybe other small mice like the Model O- and the Ultralight 2 didn't work for you, and you want to try something else, definitely get the Viper Mini. But I'm not really sure if I can um, recommend the standard Viper to anyone. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and sub, and be on the lookout for new videos in this week. Epic. Nene. Goodbye.